Hi, I'm Daniel Tal, I'm a landscape architect, I'm a SketchUp modeler, and here are my top tips for working with SketchUp. I'm gonna start with my first one, and it's a work plan. So we're in the industry I'm in, our budgets are tight, our deadlines are quick, so you have to figure out how to do things as quickly or as fast as possible. One of those things is always to try and assess if you're gonna build a model, something like this, what's the quickest way to get that model constructed and how many hours do you think it's gonna take? Your clients are gonna to wanna to know it for your proposals. And just for the record, I've never met a budget I haven't blown, which is kind of like funny to ask me about how to do this kind of work plan stuff. But it does have its uses in terms of understanding, well, this is gonna take me four hours, this is gonna take me eight hours, this might take me 12 hours. Because you go, you're gonna to have to find ways to be efficient. So everything else, the rest of these tips that I'm gonna give you all play into this first tip of come up with a work plan. Plan out how you're gonna do it, if you need specific tools, what information you might need, do you have CAD drawings, anything and everything that will make you go faster and find more efficient ways to do what you're doing. Okay, so tip number two. You have to find efficiencies in how you work in SketchUp. The first level of, of efficiencies are extensions, and the other ones include shortcuts. So I'm gonna start and show you some links here. If you haven't seen it, SketchUp has a shortcut list, and shortcuts are the quickest way to actually get something done and if you think about moving up to click on a menu versus using a shortcut keystroke, it adds up, every moment adds up, and you losing time out of your life in some format by not using a shortcut. And as, is, as important, you can set your own shortcut. If you go to Window, Preferences, and then Shortcuts, you can search for a shortcut. So for example, Hide Remove, I'm gonna do Hide Remove Model. I already have it set as Control F. That's one efficiency. The other efficiency is using the extension warehouse, and I use a whole bunch of extensions. I'm gonna show you one right now that's in development. It's called Urban Paint. I do not like modeling streetscapes. They're kind of painful, um, and they can take a long time to do. Let's just see how big that is. So this is an extension that's still in development. I'm gonna run through it real quick but I can build a really quick streetscape this way. So I'm gonna say I want an asymmetrical street. And basically using tools like this, you can quickly create or automate modeling. This is where your modeling should actually start. Um, it'll make it everything a lot faster for you to get something complete as a curb. We're gonna do a median. We'll do a planter median. You can do a stripe median as well. We do the stripe median. There'll be about 300 buildings to select from. I'm gonna hit next, almost there. We'll build the profile, and there you go. Instantly build that profile for you, all the number of lanes. And this would take me, and I'm fast at doing this stuff, a couple of hours to do, if not finding the buildings and everything else that there is there. That's one other level of efficiencies. Go to the extension warehouse, it's probably gonna make me log in. If you haven't been there, you should be, and explore. Especially the top developers, Enroth, TomTom, um, Chris Fulmer, anybody else, go try out their extensions. So extensions are your friends. SketchUp comes like a smartphone. It doesn't come with a lot of apps. You wanna use the apps that you wanna use, and you have to go find them. Go to some place like the SketchUp Essential. This is my friend, Justin Geis. Um, great guy, actually doesn't live too far away from me, and his videos are awesome, um, and really will find a lot of quick tips and tools. So, to go back to point one, work plans, you have to find efficiencies. Efficiencies are your friends. Oh, last one, I always have another one, is collect a library of components. I'll show you where to get your own quick starter one. This isn't just the stuff from 3D Warehouse. You can spend a lot of time on 3D Warehouse searching for stuff. I have a component pack that I've been using since SketchUp 2003. So you can think about how long that is. It's right here. It actually used to come with SketchUp, but it's a pretty big download. Um, and on my website, which I'll mention here in a little while, you can actually download the whole thing for free anyway. So those are 
those are 10 tips within 10 tips and we'll go on to the next one here in a second. Tip number three. This is working with external files, um, Revit files, AutoCAD files. If you're a landscape designer, landscape architect, you're working with an architect, chances are the architects have a Revit file. And you're gonna wanna import in that Revit file into SketchUp to use for context. That way you're not reinventing the wheel. Revit files, Revit files can be tricky in terms of getting them into SketchUp. One thing that we do is we use a plugin from SimLab, SimLabSoft. You can see their URL up here, simlabsoft.com. They have an exporter from directly from Revit. So you're not importing the SketchUp files into from Revit into SketchUp. You're actually going into Revit using the SimLab add-on. It's called add-ons in Revit. And then it optimizes the SketchUp export. That's the ideal way to do it. The extension doesn't cost, the plugin or add-on doesn't cost all that much. And if you work with an architect, you can either, or you have Revit, you can turn off specific layers inside the Revit model before you bring it in to SketchUp. Conversely, you can do that. The other way to do that is here's an imported Revit file. It was either imported in as an FBX or an OBJ or similar. And there's an extension called Cleanup3. It's on the extension warehouse. It's by TomTom, who works for SketchUp. And this will actually clean up all these double faces uh, and goes through and actually gives you a much more streamlined Revit model that you normally would have. Similarly, in the same vein, if you're gonna do that, you're gonna get, especially if you just want the exterior of a house, you wanna use SketchUp Outliner. Uh, and Outliner is in the trays, it's right there, but it lets you go through all these different groups and components, and because Revit actually labels everything and keeps all these family and hierarchies very, very cleanly, you can go through and you can start deleting if you have really a lot of high poly geometry, whether that's bathroom or couches, office space, interiors that you don't need, that make that the model a little bit harder to use, you can use Outliner to go and start. For example, I'll delete the roof here, just hitting delete, and you can see there's the trusses and everything. But going through and hunting down, one of the things I actually do is I'll make the model transparent or I'll go through the model and I can start clicking on the floors or whatever it might be, exterior doors, interior doors, whatever, um, structure framing. And what you wanna do if you go to model info, statistics, you could start seeing if you can stream down, streamline the model itself. So that's working with Revit. We do that fairly often since we're always asking, always ask the architects you're working with if they have a model and then figure out how to import it. Similarly, if you're in a landscape architect, landscape designer, you're probably working with an AutoCAD file for your site. I don't mind drafting site plans in SketchUp anymore, but if you don't wanna do that, you can bring in your CAD file. So here's my CAD file. And depending on the complexity, you now have to go in here and actually identify faces. So you're gonna use the line tool to give everything a face. Well, that could take a very long time to do. So I use a number of extensions to actually clean this up. I'm gonna select the whole thing. I have an extension called Dynascape Tools. It's a CAD cleanup script. I'll click on Run CAD Cleanup. There you go. Cleaned up the entire surface model for me, giving me all the surfaces that I need. It's not perfect. You still might have to do a little bit of cleanup. There's also other tools that do the same thing from Smustard, it's called um, Extend Close Lines. And what it's doing, all these extensions, here's Delete Short Lines, are actually cleaning up the SketchUp model because of the AutoCAD line work not coming in correctly. Make Faces, it'll do the same thing for me, and it'll clean it up. And I think that was, so Dynascape Mustard, that's it on terms of going from CAD, whatever CAD it might be, to SketchUp and I highly recommend you approach that process as well. One of the things that we do at our practice, I work for a company called DHM Design in Denver, Urban Design Landscape Architects. I am the drone manager on top of the 3D manager and the urban designer. So we fly drones for our projects. So what you're looking at on the screen is the top of Pikes Peak. We got permission to go up there and fly it. And what we like to do this in terms of the SketchUp modeling is then do photo matching with them. It's really efficient, very clean, 
very context and rich, happy information. And all it is is your, this is Garden of the Gods, where we're doing facility upgrades. Go in there, we can use these for just really simple photo matches. And that's a very effective way, that's one part of it. The other part, while we're doing it, is photogrammetry with the drones. So in this case, here's the drone shot, here's a view. We took our 3D model and then integrated it into the drone video or the drone image. And it's a very effective way. There's no lie in terms of what you're doing with the context. And just to show you a couple of different things here, so a couple of models, just to, here's another drone model. This one's for Crown Mountain Park in Carbondale, Colorado. This is in SketchUp. This is a mesh. Um, produced from the photogrammetry. And we have tons of different examples, including very large areas. This is Fair Play, Colorado. We've done even five and a half mile corridors. And the type of detail that you can actually produce, we're getting to the point of doing hyperscanning, extremely high resolution detailed scanning for these models. And it's the amount of information that you get for base modeling whether it's the contour data, like a pseudo survey, the aerial, but obviously the mesh. So something that we're actively exploring and doing, and we've obviously had some fun with some really good projects in various places, highly recommend implementing a drone in your practice and using it with SketchUp. So I'm gonna talk about tip five and six, I'm gonna combine them. So terrain modeling, I do a lot of terrain modeling, and there's two types of terrain modeling. You can do site grading, literally, or you can see in this video, this is contextual terrain modeling, which we'll talk about. And it's tricky, it's not always easy to do. This is a pretty detailed model. This is 130 acres in Eagle, Colorado, called Red Mountain Ranch, which is a mixed use, um, also low density, high density. Um, and you're seeing the SketchUp model that was imported into Lumion. But how do you build these kind of context or specific terrain models are really, you know, the, the, key, the key question here. So I'm gonna do a little bit of shameless promotion here, so I apologize. So first and foremost, I have a website, danieltal.com. You don't have to become a member, a full member. If you just go to the free membership courses, sign up, you get to download tons of free models, those components I was talking about you can download. And you can also get a list of the extensions that I use, specifically terrain modeling lists. But really what you wanna do is go through some of the free courses and it's SketchUp Basics, SketchUp Extension Basics is the one you really wanna watch. And then there's the terrain modeling module. So in the same vein, another shameless promotion, here's the other extension that I use. I developed this extension because of the engineering work I was doing that also goes in the site design, it's called Placemaker. It lets you import in terrain, um, buildings, high resolution aerials, roads, everything you need to build a context model. So what normally would take you about 40 minutes, you can do in about four minutes. And these are the efficiencies that I've created for myself in order to do terrain modeling. Um, and honestly build really big, large, expressive models like you're seeing here. Um, this took 40 hours, CAD plan with grading and context and terrain and the building. You can build it all really quickly. Um, once you deal with the client though and start to make changes, that's when you know you start losing efficiencies, so to speak. But all the level of detail that you can do yeah, that you would want. And again, danielthal.com, stuff's free, that's why it's there, um, with tons of downloads and models, so I highly recommend you try that as well. One of the most important things that I get questions about and that I have spent a lot of time researching is plants. So first and foremost, I'm gonna plug danieltal.com again. If you go register for free, one of the things you get is a plant library. Um, I personally love using 2D vegetation in SketchUp. You can see them right here. Um, just because they're efficient, they're expressive, they get the point across, and this is what you can get from that download site. But two other resources is, one is again, Dynascape Sketch 3D. They have thousands of plants, thousands. And they're, they're based off of Latin names. So you can actually get, there's 2D versions, there's 3D versions, but there's, and they're all efficiently created and added to for SketchUp. And up and coming, you also have a site called suplants.com. Um, I'm not associated with any of these companies, just so you know, but, they're taking this plant library and then you can use Enscape or V-Ray and potentially Lumion and start rendering things out from SketchUp and using these proxy plants. So they're very efficient. Which brings me into the next point of when you're working with plants and SketchUp and 
you have to use layers. When you're gonna use plants, use layers. My last tip is about graphics. Lumion, SketchUp graphics are everywhere. Not a bad thing. It's the egalitarianism, the democratization of 3D modeling that everybody has the ability to express themselves. In a lot of cases, your clients, and you can see on the slide here, they're not gonna care about the graphic, but you should. You wanna create an emotional kind of representation of what you do. You wanna demonstrate the pride in your craft, capture the experience of the place, but, you know, again, you can do that with SketchUp, Lumion, or whatever, or hand drawing. So, while I'm never gonna probably achieve the le level of Alex Hogriff or Jeremy Kay, it's okay. It's actually good to be inspired by people that can do that kind of work. What you wanna do is add the right brain side to the graphics that you're doing. So, and that way you can avoid bad design. Now, just one thing to consider when you're doing this, obviously, ramp to nowhere and this is an interesting situation in a house but you want to do something whether you're hand rendering it over a model um, or taking Photoshop and kind of just tweaking color balances a little bit to create something a little bit more focused or expressive um, one thing that we like to do in our office is we take the renders we'll apply a, a, a sketch filter on it, and then we'll actually go hand render it with a colored pencil on top of it to create something a little bit more softer. This is a model I did for Jim Leggett, um, hybrid method. So here you have the model that is built and then taking different colored pencils, markers, trace paper, overlaying it on top of that and getting a softer, more expressive feel. Um, this is taking a pure SketchUp model applying some Photoshop filters to it. And none of them, uh, in terms of quality, they're okay. They're all experimentation, but that's what you should be doing with these types of graphics. Don't settle on a rendering program and just say, I'm just gonna produce that. Try and experiment. Try and create something a little bit more nuanced. Take it to the next level. It does take time. Not everybody has that skill to get there. And it's usually in the environment that I work in, um, a collaboration between the different designers and the stakeholders to kind of achieve, this is a really nice graphic, uh, a nice softer look. So this is a SketchUp model brought into Lumion, rendered out, and then colored pencil on top of it, combination of the line work on top of it as well. And really playing with color. Um, again, this is taking SketchUp models and creating softer, more hand-rendered ink drawings out of them. Really, again, very soft, very expressive. So that was my tips. I hope they were helpful and keep modeling and have fun.